Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1985, Play Deep by The Outfield. This is our tribute to bassist and vocalist Tony Lewis, who passed away um, a couple weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Um, the English... Oh, yeah, I think really... Yeah, not that long ago. Hmm. The Outfield, let me take that again, um, were an English rock band best known for their hit song, Your Love, and really, that's it. Um, they had an unusual experience for a British band in that they enjoyed commercial success in the U.S., but never in their home country of the U.K. They were much more very popular I don't think I don't think I've ever heard this happen before, honestly. Mm. Who, who does this? Usually yeah. you have to gain popularity in your own country first and then the the company there makes a deal to distribute you Mm -hmm. in the u.s but how did i don't even understand how it happened honestly there is one other case that i know of hendrix he he started he first gained popularity in england and then he became popular over here well i mean i think we've had it work the other way for a number of bands first Mm -hmm. you know like cheap trick i think Japan before here. Oh, Budokan, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, the entire uh, reason Budokan is a thing. Yeah, it's you know, there's a number of bands that did that. They they found a country first, right? But the U.S. like coming from another country into the U.S. first. Yeah. I don't know who has done that. <clears throat> Play Deep is the band's debut studio album. It was released on November twelfth, nineteen eighty five, on Columbia Records, produced by William Whitman, and features. Tony Lewis on vocals and bass guitar, John Spinks on guitar and vocals, Alan Jackman on drums and percussion with additional musicians, Reg Webb on keyboards and backing vocals, and Frank Callahan on additional vocals. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnsguyo.com, you'll find links to Play Deep on Spotify and YouTube so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, Say It Isn't So. This is not a Hall and Oates cover. <laughs> Love the giant snare sound on this one. Um, they, There's were, this hair metal kind of intro and yeah. then it just kind of metals out. You know? They they tracked Alan Jackman's drums very well. Um, nice vocal harmonies. That's throughout the album. They do. They, I really enjoyed yeah. the harmonies. Um, love the slight overdrive on the guitars. Um, nice groove in the chorus and diverse too. Nice. Now there are more than three instruments playing here. You know, well, especially during the solo, there's an extra guitar. Usually two guitars and a keyboard. Very usually very subtle keyboard. Um, nice high harmony on the bridge. Very police. We'll get back to the police. Um, <laughs> nice melodic guitar solo. They have a very and I have this note in on track one. They have a very consistent sound, but I think it might get old by the end of the album. <laughs> now, the structure on this one seems odd, like mm-hmm. in the song. It's like the chorus is solid, but the verse seems a little wonky to me. I'm not sure if I'm settled. Yeah, you know, I've listened to this, you know, as a kid. Mm-hmm. I, at least I think I did. I know my brother had it, uh-huh. and I think I listened to it often. I, I know the single. This, this so is one of the. This is one of them. I I kind of remembered this one, mm-hmm. but yeah, the 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 verse structure is a little weird. I thought this like is, it doesn't flow together. No, no. Um, the timing is a little weird in the verse. Um, yeah. This is one of two songs I remembered from the album. Um, to the other one, track two, your love. Of course, this is the super mega hit that they had that you yeah. couldn't, you know, listen to radio for five seconds in the 85 without hearing <laughs> or watch any mtv right right um have to admit not a fan of this the subject matter it's about cheating on his girlfriend <laughs> yeah the whole album is like it's from different perspectives of like the bad relationship mm-hmm. yeah. you know like being cheated on cheating on somebody yeah this was cheating on someone uh-huh. and, and you know no, or suspicion of someone cheating on you yeah and of course the isolation and distance right uh john spinks the guitarist who wrote everything um says that it's entirely fictional yeah i, I was kind of surprised to see that he wrote everything usually mm-hmm. you know 
Usually well, there's a, you know, the, the singer writes something. Well, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, oftentimes the singer will write the lyrics. Um, yeah. But there are often a lot of, a number, I wouldn't say a lot, a number of bands where you have one guy who writes everything. It's all yeah. Ian Anderson writes everything. Um, Ian, yeah. Um, uh, Danny Elfman wrote everything with Lingo Blingo. Neil Merce wrote everything for Spock's Beard. But it's usually the singer. Right. Right. It's very strange to just have this. I mean, it is John Spinks's band. Mm-hmm. You know, the, he yeah, started they're just it. playing it. Yeah. Um, but, but this song, of course, is is damn perfect, honestly. It's, you know, the progression. Mm-hmm. It just, it, you know, then you have the solo bridge that yeah. adds a great dimension to it, too, mm-hmm. to pull it back a bit. Yeah. And then you, it just builds back up with that nice swirling guitar work at the end to, to end. This is an odd thing to say as a Rush fan, but the high vocal does get a little grating. <laughs> yeah, there is a huge Rush influence in there, and it didn't click with me until right before you called and I was like listening to the last track again. See, I didn't hear Rush with, with the vocals. Yeah, I don't hear much rush. Uh, I hear a lot of sting in the vocal. Well, I mean, I think there's Colin Hay, there's Sting. Oh, there's, yeah, we'll get to I Colin mean... Hay. Next track, I have two particular early, very early 80s bands who I think <laughs> these guys borrowed heavily from. Um, but sticking so with I'm not your sure if I'd pick Your Love is the Strongest or mm-hmm. not, you know? It's, it's a tough call for me. But it does have a great guitar tone, great harmonies. The chord solo always intrigued me. The solo is just these couple of chords that he plays in arpeggio through. It's not yeah. like a, a traditional solo. I enjoyed that. The keyboards are very subtle. I I had to really listen to hear them. Um, and I like that the last verse just, you know, ends half at like the halfway mark. And then we get this instrumental jam on the way out. Yeah. Love the ending oh, yeah. solo. Um. I wish they didn't use that vocal he does at the end mm-hmm. where he hits the your love. Um, I wish he, they didn't use that on the first track. Uh-huh. Like it's the same exact thing where he's hitting like the note yeah. at the end of say, is it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does the same exact thing at the end of this one. They do the of same course, exact thing a lot. Yeah, but of course you don't want to, I mean, they you didn't know which one was going to be the big hit. Yeah. <laughs> so they, I think they were hedging their bets. Um, on to track three, I Don't Need Her. And the other band that they remind me of, aside from Men at Work and The Police, I, but I love what I call the big country guitar riff. Damn it, you have big country too. <laughs> you got it too. I was like, I was like, wait for it. They are big country meets Men at Work with Colin Hay on vocals. Or not Colin Hay, with the Sting on vocals. There's a I mean, there's a there's a little of the guy from the country and there's a little bit of Colin, but but yeah, I mean, I don't know how much more they go big country, but this is definitely a big country song, you but know. There the that outfield sound that's on like all but three tracks is very much like Men at Work meets Big Country. Um, and and, and think... a lot of his vocal is very reminiscent of the guy from Big Country too. Um. But I, I do I like the, the slightly work, distorted though, bass. It's just the vocal. What? I think the Men at Work comparison is more about the vocal than the music, because Men at Work had so much more of a jazz kind of thing going well, on. They had more going to them, but, but that whole eighty early eighties power pop thing. Yeah. Which Men at Work very much pioneered. These guys latched on to. Um, with that high, I would say big... there's a lot more of like a '60s power pop thing going on here for mm. for, for throughout the album more than anything else. Uh-huh. Yeah, perhaps, well, perhaps. Um, I, I do. I Men at Work is more prog, you know, influence. Yeah, perhaps. Um, I do like the distorted bass, uh, nice double stops in the solo, uh, and and you know there are some nice you know single note leads behind um, those double stops in the solo. I do enjoy that. Um, you know, John Spinks didn't go for conventional solos a lot, so yeah, it's nice yeah. to hear that a little here and there. Um, on to track four, Every Time You Cry. Slow song is a nice change of pace. Yeah. Um, I like the vocals on I Don't Need Her. It's probably one of his strongest 
lead vocals. Mm. But this one, um, I think I, I really liked this one as a kid because it really showed off the harmonies yeah. and, and I just like the contrast between the verse and chorus. Yeah. Nice ethereal guitar tone. Lewis's voice really fits this one. Um, yeah. Great blend between the ahs and the keys, you know, the harmonies and the keyboards. Yeah. Um, nice subtle 12 string on the chorus. Uh, you don't hear much acoustic or 12 on this album, but it's, it pops up occasionally. It's nice. Um, it's blended in, which is why it's like there's only one guitar player credited, really. Well, there is. <laughs> I mean, Tony. Well, Tony no, John is the his only bass guitar. Right. Yeah. So who, um, I mean, is he over like, dubbing? Well, he's or... all over dubbed. They had a, another yeah. guitarist who toured with them. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the guy in the your the other guitar player in the Your Love video is their touring guitarist. Um, and the keyboard player is Reg Webb. The keyboard player, the blind keyboard player in the Your, yeah. your, Web, your Love video is Reg Webb. Um, so that's their touring band. Uh, in the studio, it's just the three of them with Reg Webb and another background vocalist who also toured with them. Um, Nice melodic bass part in the second half of verse two. Tony Lewis doesn't show off on bass, but he does get a little melodic here and there, and it's always nice. I always like to hear it. Um, yeah, I would like to have heard more bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah, bass for the most part is very buried be behind these, you know, thick guitar yeah. sounds. Um, interesting, very beatly vocal vocal harmonies in verse three. Um, nice drum part in the outro. Nice gong at the end. <laughs> There's not enough gong. And I mean, music in general, not enough gong. Gong and cowbell. Mm. On to track five, 61 seconds. Um, nice harmonized guitar riff in the beginning. I like the way the guitars on the left and the right complement each other, and it's a nice separation. You get one in each ear. Um, good groove. Um, yeah, this is what I remember from the old days, mm -hmm. too. Um, yeah, it's very catchy. I think the lyrics are bullshit, but, you know. <laughs> I wasn't paying atten much attention to the lyrics on this album. The only one I've, I ever noticed was Your Love because I heard it a billion times back in the day. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, kind of the suggesting of a 9 to 5 person being a bad thing, which oh. I, I think it, lyrics like this kind of fucked me up as a kid because, mm -hmm. you know, it's what most of us wind up yeah. you know, having to do. Right. <laughs> Um, like the bass, it, it's nice and clear in the mix. Um, this is where I noticed that the, the big country men at work thing. Um, like the punctuated rhythm into chorus three, nice big guitar bass and kick hits in the outro. But this is also where the album started going down for me because I got just got tired of every song sounding the same. Well, I think the next one is a bit of a detour. Eh. Um, Mystery Man, track six. Nice. The synth, the synths in the opening were a nice surprise. The first time we get really yeah. obvious keyboards. Um, I mean, but, it's a very weird ass solo that they give him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or that keyboard takes, solo is fascinating. Know. Um, feel like that the pace picks up at the outro. Um, yeah, hearing more keys was a nice change. But this is where I actually have in my notes starting to get tired of almost every song sounding the same. But that, I mean, this one was unique. I thought. I mean, I thought this. Was, I mean, this is a pretty strong track. If you had, if you heard, put this one earlier in the album, I think. Mm. Um, on to track seven. All the and lyrically, it's weird okay. too. Like, what is it? A pre-internet Nigerian prince? I'm not. I don't really remember this one at all, honestly. Mm. Uh -huh. On to track seven, All the Love. Yet another song that sounds the same. Vocals very sting. Nice chimey, chimey guitar tone in the chorus. Nice snappy snare sound, which is a, a note I can say for everything. I love how they recorded a snare. Um, nice to hear an I upfront... I do remember this one. This was a pretty big single. Okay. Um, nice to hear an upfront single note conventional guitar solo for a change. Um and this is my my main comment on the outfield. This is this is this sums it up for me. They're a really good band for singles, but an album gets <laughs> monotonous. Yeah, I could see how this would be like at least three or four other songs on the album. Yeah. The the one difference with this one is the drummer gets into this weird kind of waltz during the solo. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it is very much the same mm -hmm. as say is it so. Yeah. 
or even your love. Yeah. On the track nine, talk to me. Nice to hear Lewis's voice go a little lower on, in the beginning. Um, nice harmonies in the pre-chorus. I'm just struggling to think for things to say at this point. I actually have that note, struggling to think of things to say. Um, <laughs> this nice... one's a very 60s pop sound to yeah. it. Like nice... At first I thought like Fogarty's Rock and Roll Girls, but then I was like, wait a minute, Fogarty took that from someone else. So the, mm. Like after... It was, you know, the Rock and Rebels Wild Weekend. Nothing Fogarty ever did was original. <laughs> you know, he was very much a roots, you know, call back to your influences kind of guy. Yeah. Um, nice jangly, maybe acoustic guitar in verse two and on the outro. Um, like how high in the mix the bass is on the bridge. Um, that's about it. Although it is weird that Rock and Roll Girls and this one was out the same year. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, they're the outfield, and the album he did was Centerfield. Oh, yeah, because um, Fogarty was going for a Super <laughs> Americana thing. Um, I don't know. I think there is a story behind the name of the outfield and why a British band picked a baseball reference, but I don't remember it, it offhand. They, they, for, I think they first went for the Baseball Furies from the Warriors. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> and I don't know how that wound up being... The mm -hmm. outfield. <laughs> After yeah. a while, that warped into it. <laughs> I have no idea how that transformation took place, but yeah, that's what they they like the Warriors. Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, on to track nine, taking my chances. Nice jagged guitar tone in the intro. This one sounds different. I I, I appreciate yes. these last two songs because they're different. Um, this one's definitely another left turn on the album. Yeah. Um. John Spinks gets some lead vocals in this one. He reminds me a lot of Joey Ramone. I, I'm a sucker for a songwriter singing his own lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, the Tony Banks thing. Yeah, yeah. So they're not the best singer in the world, mm -hmm. but they're going to fucking do it anyway. Yeah, this and is and my... this one, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's like such a more frantic pace, too, uh -huh. than, than the Much rest of the album. Um, yeah, this is, this is my favorite just because it's different. Um, uh, the acoustic yeah, and definitely. the chorus add some nice texture. Great rock guitar tone on the solo. Um, I think he tapped during the solo. Oh yeah, uh, I think I heard uh, some tapping. <laughs> There's also that in that break solo. There, I think that's a reference to the wall. Okay, where where they'd have the unanswered phone call. Mm -hmm. This is the it's song. It's like the same dial tone and everything. Um, in later albums, they went a bit prog, apparently, from according to Wikipedia. Um, and I think this was kind I of the do first. I remember hint them of it. having a heavier keyboard sound, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think this was the first hint of it. This was the first point where John Spinks decided, okay, I don't want to be a pop star. I want to make. Rock. I want to play rock. <laughs> but yeah, this is more a garage. Yeah. Sound. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, on to track 10, last track, Nervous Alibi. Nice slow opening. They finally changed things up for the last two songs. Um, great vocal. Probably my favorite vocal on the album. Um, really? This would probably be my pick for weakest on the really? album, actually. Okay. It's just, it doesn't seem like a fully developed song, and I'm not sure well, I, the, I just particularly the like the vocals. Okay. Hmm. Um, nice melodic bass in the second half of the verse. Love the giant snare sound. The drum fills leading into and during the solo. Very Phil Collins. Yeah. Um, well, how could you not in 85, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure they had gated reverb, but, you know, beyond that, just the, the phrasing of them was totally in the air tonight. <laughs> um, so do you it's kind of like uh, It's kind of like every time you cry only without the big chorus and you just have like that lower end of the register but then you, i mean you have that brief climax at the end of the song but i it just doesn't really work for me as a climax of the album i think mm -hmm. i think i definitely rearranged the track listing of it but yes i would recommend it i think uh there's a lot of stuff that kind of clumps together but i think there's also a lot of stuff that really stands out too at the same time I... and the harmonies are fucking to die for and this is a rarity, but I don't recommend it. Um, just go listen to Big Country's first album and Minute Works' first album and some Police. Much better version of the same sound. 
That's it for play. Sorry, Bruce. Um, that's it for play deep. <laughs> Until next time, we'll be reviewing Black Light Syndrome by Bozio Levin Stevens. Yes, Terry Bozio, Terry Bozio from Missing Persons, Tony Levin from a ton of session work, Every... also King Crimson and Peter Gabriel. Yeah. And Steve Stevens, best known for playing with Billy Idol. Oh, wow. On guitar. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Dirty Diana. He's a hell of a guitar player. Um, yeah, he is. Wildly underrated. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.